uh, for New York and sending a message to the nation. Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. While the rest of the country was watching the presidential debate this week, New York saw a handful of clusters of COVID-19 pop up in Brooklyn and the lower Hudson Valley. And it's probably the worst time for that to happen. Schools just started classes in September and we're now entering flu season. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the state isn't planning to go back to any sort of lockdown, but that they're targeting resources toward these new clusters. You now, once you have this information, aggressively target these clusters, okay? These are embers that are starting to catch fire in dry grass. Send all the firefighting equipment and personnel to those embers uh, and stamp out the embers right away. With me in studio to talk about that and much, much more is Bill Mahoney from Politico New York and Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio. Thank you both so much for being here. Glad to be Thank here. You. So Karen, let's go to you first. Let's talk about these clusters. So it's been a while since we saw COVID really go up in New York State. We're seeing these really dangerous spikes. Where are they? They're in parts of Brooklyn, Queens, Rockland and Orange counties, uh, a lot of them are associated with the Orthodox Jewish community. Also, there's some clusters upstate. There's one mm. in Horseheads in the Southern Tier, and it had to do with a church service. And actually more worrisome, this information just come in in the last day or two, is that in Binghamton, there's a mini outbreak, and the officials can't really trace it to one event, which means that it could be community spread, not to alarm anybody, but that's the big- I'm a little alarmed. Yeah, but that's the big question. You know, can these clusters stay as clusters and be contained and get people there who maybe aren't complying with social distancing or wearing masks to do that? Or is it gonna become community spread? Because I feel like, you know, to use that expression, we've seen this movie before. I remember sitting right. in Governor Cuomo's briefing room back in March, him talking about an outbreak in New Rochelle and how they were taking all these steps to contain it. And then within, I think within two weeks, we were like completely shut down, so. I remember thinking back in March, like March 1st, I think was our first case, that it was not going to be very serious. I remember saying to a lot of people like, don't worry about it, it's overblown, and that was just totally wrong. Yeah. So what is the state doing right now to try to tamp down these clusters, I guess, to try to prevent them from growing into a second wave? Well, most people do wear masks. You have to wear masks in public. There are mostly are not large gatherings. There is social distancing. I mean, we're all sitting six feet apart. Right. So perhaps that will help, but who knows? I mean, it's really hard to know. This is gonna be a big test in the next few weeks, isn't it? Is there community spread or will COVID just come back in clusters that can be contained through you know, social distancing and other technology? It's, it's hard to say. It's a scary time right now waiting to see what happens. And I was thinking it would be a really big test of have we learned from our mistakes, I guess the first time around, are we gonna take steps this time to try to prevent it from getting any bigger? And I think the indication is just from the past day's numbers is that we can hopefully get it under control, but we will see. Something that we're gonna be watching, of course. Bill, I wanna to go to you next. Right, sure. The Independent Redistricting Commission met this week. A lot of people don't know what that is. I'm even a little bit fuzzy on why it exists. Um, tell me about it and what were they looking at this week? This seems very early to start redistricting, but you know, obviously I don't know anything about this. Well, we haven't talked about it a lot since 2012, so right. anybody would be forgiven if they don't remember the details. But flashback then when they were doing the district lines for Congress and the state legislature, there was a big fight. Gov Governor Cuomo ran for office promising to veto any lines that the legislature drew itself. They drew their own lines. They were just as horribly gerrymandered as they are pretty much every decade. Um, but in exchange for signing them, he pushed through this compromise where it was this independent redistricting commission, which some people said was great, it's the best step forward in redistricting we've had in half a century. Others said it probably wasn't going to work as well as advertised. Um, but starting in 2021, 2022, once we got the new census numbers, this is gonna take over the redistricting process. And fast forward, we're getting pretty close to those dates. We're about a year away from when they need to start coming out with some maps and having the public be able to review them. Um, so this commission is getting to work. Um, but lo and behold, they had their first meeting yesterday and th their task right now, since we don't have the census numbers yet, is to basically start hiring executive directors, staff, the people who can start cranking out these maps and looking at the numbers as soon as we get the census numbers. But the money that's been in the budget to let them do this, the governor's office has just been sitting on it and not shared it with them. So 
we're off to a bit of a rough start. We still have some time to go, but all this hope of getting it started early and making sure that we have a full public review process, it's hit a speed bump right out of the gate. The, the difference now from 2012 and from many decades is that Democrats control both houses of the legislature. And I guess that's the big question, right? Even though this is supposedly an <clears throat> independent commission, are the Democrats going to be able to draw the lines just as they like to keep the Republicans out as long as possible, which really essentially is what the Republicans in the Senate did to the Democrats for many, many decades. That's actually one of the big questions on the ballot this November. Democrats currently have 40 seats out of the 63 in the Senate, thanks to some massive gains they made two years ago. But the constitutional amendment that created this commission basically said it, it's composed essentially of four Democrats, four Republicans, a couple independent people. It needs to have some sign off from all of them in order to create lines, and then it sends them to the legislature. Basically, it said that if Republicans control the legislature, they can just pass the lines um, as is right. um, and do what they want with they have a majority. But it also said if Democrats ever took back the Senate, they need a super majority of 42 seats to basically ignore the lines and draw what they want, gerrymander the Republicans into oblivion and turn a blue state into one that's permanently blue in the Senate, just like it kind of has been in the Assembly for decades. So if they can pick up two seats in the Senate this year, mm -hmm. um, Democrats will have the power to basically ignore this commission and do what they want, and the Republican Party could become a thing of the past. And so that's something that to keep an eye on in November, where you know Republicans are making a go at taking the majority. I don't think a lot of people at this point are confident they can flip the eight seats in a presidential year. They would need to have the majority. But their goal right now should probably be, at the very least, stop Democrats from picking up two more, because if not, by the time 2022 comes around, there might be no path for them to ever come back into power yeah, in New York. You're right. If they're drawn out of, you know, if it makes it that much more difficult to get to win, then they're probably not going to come back for a long time. Well, we've seen in the assembly, it's been since the 70s, Republicans had a majority. The Democrats were able to draw their own lines. And now we've got most elections, it's like 107 out of the 150 seats are Democratic. Right. And best case scenario, Republicans might fight for 50 of those. And we could wind up in a similar situation in the Senate where the Republican Party is just a thing of the past um, mm. if they don't have a decent showing this year. You know, speaking of things, Karen, that aren't mm. going to come back for a long time, possibly, are businesses. You had a story this mm. week about how businesses will say, are saying that if we have a second wave and we have to go back into a shutdown, that some just may not recover. And of course, we know that some have not recovered. But tell me what business leaders told you this week about that. Well, I think what's amazing is that so many of the smaller businesses are still in business because they really have their revenues cut so severely. Yeah. But I talked to the National Federation of Independent Business and they surveyed their New York members. 40% of them say even under current conditions, they don't know if they're gonna be in business in a year, let alone uh, you know, another shutdown. And they make the argument that they should be able to stay open because they said in the spring, big box stores stayed open and they made a profit. And there really hasn't been any incidences of transmission of people going into their local hardware store or the grocery store and coming down with COVID-19. So they're making the case that it's relatively safe if they practice all the social distancing rules. But, you know, ultimately, we need the pandemic to end. I mean, that's what we need. Yeah, we <laughs> that's all, the ultimate solution. We right? all need that. I think yes, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll leave it there. Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio, Bill Mahoney from Politico, New York. Thank you both so much, as always.